Hello, guys! We are second-year students of Biological Institute in Tomsk State University. And today, we are going to tell you about the Garden City movement. Once upon a time, people lived in harmony with nature. But then, the era of big cities came, and the green jungles were replaced by stone ones. People have stopped valuing nature, preferring man-made structures to it. The buildings got taller and taller, and over time, they blocked the light to the plants. Only Ebenezer Howard, who founded the Garden City Movement, was able to prevent the complete destruction of nature. In his book, he described an ideal city where people could live their best life surrounded by nature. He claimed that these places would attract people like a magnet from where they wouldn't want to live. His concept of an ideal city was organized around radial streets and large green space. The plan shows a 6,000-acre site housing, a maximum of 32,000 people, also with public parks and green spaces. The design mixes pleasant and healthy natural elements of the countryside with social and economic benefits of the city. A large central park would be surrounded by a crystal palace, shopping arcade, then a ring of homes, surrounded by factories, then a green belt. Howard says to not blindly follow the instructions of the book and that each city should rely on its own needs and geography. When one garden city reaches capability, another would be planned nearby, creating a small network of areas. The outer band around the city would be used as agricultural land. Also, the garden city's land is functionally zoned. As the American historian and urbanist Lewis Mumford said, at the beginning of the 20th century, two great new inventions took form before our eyes the aeroplane and the garden city, both harbingers of a new age the first gave man wings and the second promised him a better dwelling place when he came down to earth. The perfect garden city would contain specific utopian elements like small blocks that would accommodate housing, industry and agriculture surrounded by green belts that would limit their growth. Howard illustrated clusters of such several creations which show the effectiveness of garden cities. Cities like Letchworth, Wellin and Stockfield in England were built using these ideas. However, the concept was influential in other countries too, even outside Europe, with adaptations and reinterpretations according to their features. This concept is still frequently revisited to this day, also much different from the original idea, to propose urban planning solutions that attempt integration between urban areas and green spaces. Howard believed that urban design could shape human behavior and improve social well-being. While his model didn't immediately gain the government support, it can be said he became the creator of a concept of the modern planning community. Today, Howard's principles continue to influence modern planning and the design of developments around the world. New urbanism and similar movements matches Howard's accent on public places, accessible transportation and jobs near homes as important components of healthy cities. Don't you agree that the future of our planet depends on our attitude to the environment now? By designing new cities eco-friendly, we set the ecological vector of our future. Now you can see references which were used during our work. That's all. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below. Bye-bye.